Hello, and welcome back to my writing desk. My name is David Glenn. For today, I wanted to talk about one of the animals in my world building for my current work in progress. And yes, if you haven't guessed by the costume, it's from that group of animals. Kai is a world parallel to our own. Created by the god Wanky, it serves as a home to various unique species descended from Wanky's original designs. In one corner of Kai is Aos Taloon, home to the Kingdom of Kanmore. It is here that humans have managed to set up a civilization of their own despite sharing their home with dinosaurs. Today, we will cover another species of dinosaur from my world building, the Negevini. The Negevini is a species of Dromaeosauridae dinosaur native to Aos Taloon. At only 2 feet tall and 6 feet long, they are not the most imposing of animals. However, like most dromaeosaurids, or raptors as they are more commonly known, they can be quite dangerous under the right circumstances. What sets the Negevini apart is the fact that they were actually tamed by humans. Now, just because the Negevini have been tamed, that doesn't mean they're fully domesticated. Contrary to what one might expect, the Negevini don't live in packs, and they certainly don't risk hunting larger herbivores. Negevini are mesopredators, and fill ecological niches similar to jackals or raccoons. They primarily target smaller game or scavenge when they can. Sometimes they will come together for food, but they have no real bond with each other and will bail should the need arise. That being said, Negevini do mate for life. Once a male and a female take interest in each other, they will stay together, and if one is killed, the other will never mate again. Females will lay clutches of up to 8 to 12 elongated eggs at a time, and arrange the shallow nests in a spiral. The male and female will take turns incubating the eggs, sitting on them and turning them over so that they don't get too hot or cold. Alternating incubation duty helps the embryos develop, but if the eggs are left in the sun too long, they could overheat. That is why parents will lay their eggs in an area with shade, like shrubs or even near termite mounds. It is believed that the Negevini first started incubating some of their eggs near human settlements for shade. Incubation usually takes about 50 to 60 days, but sometimes, if conditions are right, eggs can hatch quicker. The parents will both care for their young, feeding them an assortment of meat for the first few weeks. Baby Negevini can reach full maturity within two years, and then they leave their parents to find mates of their own. Though the probable cause of them staying around humans may have come from them looking for a place to shade their eggs, they found other reasons to stay. One of the primary reasons for them sticking around was food as humans also had pests to deal with like imp rats. They also probably stole from the humans as well, making them first appear as pests. That is how the Shikobwe legend starts, with the Japanese stealing food from humans who wanted them gone as a result. However, one day some raiders attacked a local village only to be driven back by the Japanese that lived there. As a result, the humans allowed the dinosaurs to stay, giving them food in return. While this story is debated, there are elements of truth to it. The Negevini will be hostile to strangers that they perceive to be a threat. And there have been recorded instances of multiple Negevini mobbing a predator that tried to take a human child. While this may be out of self-interest as any loss could result in a threat to their eggs, so the Negevini will protect humans to make sure they are not run off. Generally, humans have learned that they can earn the loyalty of Negevini by leaving them food. While Negevini will accept these items, and there are several breeds as a result of human and Negevini interactions, it is important to know that they can be dangerous. There have been instances of them attacking people for random reasons, from perceiving them as a threat to their young to just being hungry. It should be noted that these cases are rare and not likely to happen as long as you give them their space. Also, when attacks do happen, other Negevini can be seen driving off the offending Negevini or outright killing it. This is probably to ensure that they don't get driven out of human settlements. As mentioned before, 
the Japanese will also keep any settlement free of pests. They actively hunt a variety of multi tuberculate and even eutrochonodonts, effectively keeping crops and supplies safe. They will also mob taluni drakes, which are often seen as more dangerous, especially to children. As a result, parents often feel safer with their children playing in the fields, knowing that the Negevini will help keep them safe. That being said, not all humans view the Negevini in a good light. The Garubwe view the Negevini as a nuisance due to them being nomadic in nature. The Negevini will steal food from them, and they will also harass the bushhounds. And because the Garubwe don't have any permanent structures, they offer no safe places for the Negevini to build their nests, so the Negevini aren't as friendly to them. The Ropakomo actually see the Negevini in a positive light. In some cases, they see the Negevini as tricksters, stealing from more powerful opponents and outsmarting them. They even create special areas for the Negevini to build their nests in, and offer them treats on a regular basis. As a result, the settlements are completely free of pests, though the Negevini are noted to be more plump than normal. So, though they are not exactly domesticated, the Negevini and humans have found a way to coexist in a way that benefits both species. Through mutual respect and cooperation, the Negevini have gained a good supply of food and shade for their young. The humans have gotten an extra means of protection for their children. Just goes to show you that you never know how two different species will find a way to live together. I wanted to do raptors in a way that was different from Jurassic Park, returning the animals to their more humble roots. That is why I made the Negevini small, and not as aggressive as most media depicts them. I was going to make them pack hunters, but now it's believed that raptors may not have hunted in packs to take down larger prey. So I decided to update my notes and try to reflect that. Now it's your turn. What's an unlikely animal companion people have in your worlds? Are they fully domesticated, or have they just learned to coexist in a way that benefits both sides? Tell me about them in the comments below. Special thanks to Keenan Taylor, Brandon S. Pilcher, Nick Raptor, Henrique Gandam, and Emily Stepp for providing the art used in this video. If you want to commission them, links to their social media will be provided in the description below. I should say that Henrique Gandam is caught up in his own projects and is unavailable to do commissions. And thanks to viewers like you for watching this video. Thank you. I did want to say that I'm also opening up videos for sponsorship. You can see the rates here on the screen. And if there's a certain topic that you want to see me talk about, please send me an email about it and we'll go from there. Next time, we will do a sequel of sorts to my Mwenki video and discuss his counterpart, the Devil of Kae, Kuroyo. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.